For question papers and study notes, go to allpasspapers.com. Allpasspapers.com. Okay, so let's look at question five. And it says, it is given that tan 50, let me write that down. Time 50 is equal to K. Express each of the following in terms of K. So we're basically going to write each and everything that we've been asked to write in terms of K. That means in our answer, we need to have the letter K. So K, let's look at 5.1.1. So it says cos 40, but we've not been given anything that is equals to cos 40. So we're going to get cos 40 with an aid of a diagram. So let's go ahead and draw that Cartesian plane and the triangle. So our diagram, the triangle that we're going to have will be on the first quadrant. That is because angle 50 degrees is found on the first quadrant right so we're going to have 50 degrees here so i'll just write it here because i have no enough space and my diagram is relatively small and then it means here we'll have 40 degrees right so we've been told that tan 50 is equals to k so tan we know that it is opposite over adjacent that means we will have k over one right so that will give us tan 50 equals k because it will be k over one so now let's go ahead and look for cos 40 so here is our angle 40 degrees so cos 40 is equals to adjacent which is k and over hypotenuse which we do not have so hypotenuse is still equal to r so let's go ahead and find the value of our hypotenuse so we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to our hypotenuse squared so the value of x for us is one so we'll have one squared plus and the value of y in our case is k so we'll have k squared equals to r squared and with that our r will be equal to root of one plus k squared so cos 40 will be equal to our adjacent or the adjacent to 40 degrees which is k all over the hypotenuse which is root of 1 plus k squared so let's go ahead and do 5.1.2 it says 2 sine 25 cos 25 over minus 2 plus 4 sine squared 25 so let me write that let me write that down before we solve it so i'll have 2 sine 25 cos 25 all over minus 2 plus 4 sine squared 25 degrees. So we know the double angle for sine we, and we know that it is expressed by 2 sine a cos a equals to sine 2a. So in our case we have a as 25 degrees and we're going to express that in terms of sine, in terms of double angle for sine, right? So we'll have sine 2 times 25 degrees all over. So here on the denominator, we have a common factor of minus 2. So let me remove the common factor and we'll have 1 minus 2 sine squared x, right? So let's go ahead. Sine 2 times 25 will be equal to sine 50 right and then we'll divide by minus 2 into so we know 1 minus 2 sine squared x to be a double angle or an expression for the double angle of course so we'll have cos 2 times 25 sorry in place of x it's 25 degrees so i will have sine squared 25 yes so we'll have sine we'll have so we'll have cos 2 times 25. And now let's go ahead and simplify that. It means we will have 1 over minus 2 times sine 50 divided by cos 50. And that will be equal to minus 1 over 2 multiplied by tan 50. Because we know sine x over cos x to be tan x so in our case we'll have tan 50 so now let's go ahead and solve that we know tan 50 to be k so all of this will be equal to minus k all over 2 let's move on to 5.1.3 which says sine of 10 degrees 
So with the angles that we have, which is 50 and 40, we can have 10 is if we say sine 50 minus 10. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we have sine 10 degrees equals to sine 50 degrees minus 40 degrees, right? And now we'll have the compound angle for sine. So that will be equal to sine 50 cos 40 minus cos 50 sine 40. So let's go ahead and find out what sine 50 is. Back to our diagram, sine 50 is equal to k over our r, which means we will have k all over root 1 minus 1 plus k squared multiplied by cos 40 is equal to sine 50. So we'll have k over root 1 plus k squared, right? And then we will have minus cos 50. We know cos 50 to be this or 50 degrees. So it will be 1 over r, which will be 1 over root 1 plus k squared. And sine 40 is equal to cos 50. So we'll have 1 over root 1 minus 1 plus k squared so that will mean so that will give us the product of k squared all over root times root the roots will cancel each other so we'll have 1 plus k squared minus 1 times 1 will be 1 all over when the denominator multiply we'll have 1 plus k squared so if we put so now that we have the same denominator for different numerators, the numerators will be added together. So we'll have k squared minus 1 all over 1 plus k squared, which is generally k squared minus 1 over k squared plus 1. Right? So now let's move on to 5.2. 5.2 2 says given sine 540 degrees plus x times cos into 90 plus x, all over sine minus x and 5.2.1 says simplify the expression above fully to a single trigonometric ratio so we will have sine 540 plus x times cos 90 so we'll have a bracket there let me write that down neatly times cos into 90 plus x all over sine minus x. So if you see an angle that is greater than 360, on your calculator, you type that angle. That means we will have 540 on our calculators. And then we will subtract 360. And that will give us 180. So sine of 540 plus x is equivalent to sine of 180 plus x. And we know that 180 plus an angle or 180 plus x is on the third quadrant. And sine is negative on the third quadrant. That means we will have minus sine x close bracket multiplied by so we have cos 90 if we have an angle found on the y-axis it changes or the trigonometric or the trigonometric ratio changes and now because we have cos that means cos will change to be sine so now let's look at 90 plus x 90 plus x is found on the second quadrant and on the second quadrant sine is positive but cos is negative that means we will have a negative here and then now because we have 90 cos will change to be sine so we'll have negative sine x all over sine of negative x remains as negative sine x and if you do not know this that means you can take your calculator just type in sine negative one or negative any number and it will give you a negative answer therefore you will know that it will be negative sine x so now if we look at this the numerator has two brackets which are identical but they also identical to the bracket on the denominator so they can just cancel out like this and we will have minus sine x left so now let's move on to 5.2.2 5.2.2 says hence determine the values of x in the interval x is a is an element of 0 degrees to 360 degrees for which this root 
will be real. So if we look at what's inside our root and what we've been given initially, we'll see that this is the same thing. So we need to find the value of which whatever is inside the root will be greater or equal to zero. I want you to remember that a square root of minus one does not exist, but square root of zero exists and the square root of any number that is greater than zero exists. So what we have here for 5 point for 5.2.2 will be minus sine x is greater than zero. So then the reason why we have minus sine x, it is because whatever that is inside here is equivalent to this. And in 5.2.1, we proved that this which is here is equal to minus sine x, didn't we? So now we're going ahead and... So now we'll go ahead and find the values of x for which negative sine x will be greater than zero. But we can will be greater or equal to zero. So, but then we cannot solve x in but then we cannot use the inequality sign. We need to use the equal sign. So we'll have minus sine x is equal to zero. So and we'll divide both sides by minus one and we'll have sine x still being equal to zero and then we'll do sine inverse of zero degrees which will mean x is equals to zero degrees plus k now i want you to listen to me attentively for sine we have sine is positive on the first quadrant and also positive on the second quadrant so our re our ref so our reference angle is zero degrees that means we'll have zero degrees plus k360 for the first quadrant right and then we'll have 180 degrees minus zero degrees plus k360 for the second quadrant so if we look at this that means our answers will be or our absolute values of x's will be zero degrees 180 degrees and if we add 360 on this one or substitute one for k we'll have 360 degrees and what so on so if you have an inverse of so if you have sine x equal to zero when you write or when you mm -hmm. so if you have sine x is equal to zero when you so if you have sine x is equal to zero when you solve x will be equal to zero degrees plus k 180 degrees or however you write it but do not forget to write that k is an element of integer right so now we need the absolute values we need the values of x in the given interval it cannot be a general solution but has to be a specific one so for the value of k we will substitute zero at first and our x will be equal to zero degrees right and then for value of k we'll substitute one our x will be equal to 180 degrees and then we'll substitute 2 and our x will be equal to 360 degrees. So these are the solutions that we needed.